Hello everyone, my name is Winters and welcome to Winters Budget Builds. Today we are going to cover the Kelvin Timeline D4X Pilot Bird of Prey T6. In this episode we are going to start off with the weapons, gear and equipment. Uh, then we are going to move on to the skill tree and specializations. From there we will move on to the traits and the bridge officer abilities and then the bridge officers themselves. And then the duty officers. Finally, we will finish up the episode by playing a patrol mission so that you guys can see what the build is like in battle. And uh, before we finish up, we will give this build a fun factor rating. So, uh, yeah, this is an absolutely uh, wonderful ship. Uh, uh, definitely a favourite of mine. Um, this ship uh, was seen on screen in... Star Trek Into Darkness, I think it was. Um, the second uh, JJ movie. Um, and uh, uh, you can obtain this ship from the Kelvin Timeline lockbox uh, or the Infinity lockbox uh, is where you can pick this bad boy up. Um, like we said, it is a pilot ship, so it's got pilot maneuvers. And um, they can be a lot of fun. Uh, but, uh, yeah, really, really good ship. I, I uh, definitely like it. It's one of my faves, for sure. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, get stuck into this episode. So, first up, we're starting off with weapons up front. And first of all, we have the Terran Task Force Disruptor Dual Heavy Cannons. Uh, this comes from Tier 4 Tem uh, Terran Reputation. We're using this in conjunction with the... Uh, Fer ferrofluid hydraulic assembly or however you pronounce that uh, we'll talk about the two piece set bonus that we get with that later on uh, next up we have the resident disruptor dual heavy cannons uh, you can pick those up or this you can only have one of them you can pick uh, this up from the story mission blood of the ancients we're using this in conjunction with uh, this tactical console the harmonic resonance relay uh, we will talk about that uh, a little later when we get onto consoles and the two-piece set bonus. Next up, something that's a little bit unusual for me, uh, but in this build we actually do have a torpedo, and this time we are using the Nausicaan Energy Torpedo Launcher. Uh, so false fire, there you go. There's a build with a torpedo in it. It's done. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, the uh, Nausicaan Energy Torpedo Launcher you can get from the story mission Echoes of Light, and we're using this in conjunction with the science console, the Nausicaan Siphon uh, Capacitor. And uh, we will talk about that uh, later on as well, uh, when we get that far. Uh, next up, uh, we have uh, two advanced fleet disruptor dual heavy cannons uh, to finish off uh, up front. Uh, these come from the fleet. Uh, you need tier 2 in the engineering facility uh, in order to be able to purchase advanced fleet weapons. Uh, so yeah, that's where that they come from. Um, uh, next up, we have the Iconian Resistance Deflector Array. Uh, this comes from tier 2 Iconian Reputation. Uh, a good, solid... Um, uh, deflector array uh, to be perfectly honest with you um, we're using this in conjunction with the iconium resistance resilient shield array um, and the two piece set bonus is uh, enhanced shield distribution distribute shields applies 165.9 shield regeneration for five seconds to each facing once trigger goes on 30 second cooldown so just to show you guys what that is, uh, if you go down here to where the icon of your ship is, where your ship health and shields are, all you have to do is click on that and it'll redistribute your shield strength. Uh, basically, it'll balance your shields. If one shield facing, let's say the front one is completely down and empty, or even partially empty, it will take uh, shield energy from the other three facings and send it over to this one and build up the uh, shield strength. Uh, and uh, when you click on this, uh, you've seen that aura that came around the ship. That was actually a shield heal. And uh, believe me, it has got me out of a lot of sticky situations. Because um, it's a really good shield heal. And um, it, can, it can just... 
be perfect, you know, like, in, in, uh, if the time, requ uh, you know, that you need a shield heal and you you don't have uh, a bridge officer ability at the time, uh, that can be very, very useful. Um, <clears throat> right, next up, uh, we have the Bejor Defense Hyper Impulse Engines. Uh, we are using this in conjunction with the Bejor Defense Hyper Injection Warp Core. Um, we're using this, these two pieces for the two-piece set bonus, which is uh, plus 19% disruptor damage, which is absolutely huge. Uh, a massive buff there just for using uh, two pieces of the Bejor Defense Set. Um, uh, you can get both of these pieces from the story mission Scylla and Charybdis. That's where you can pick up the uh, uh, Bejor defense set. With the exception of the warp core. The warp core uh, was from an event ship. And uh, I believe is now in the Phoenix store. Actually, I should have checked this before we started recording. Uh, I think it's a very rare token to get that warp core. Now, here's the thing. Normally, I go for the... Uh, Bejor Defense Hyper Impulse Engines and the Bejor Defense Covariant, I think it's Covariant Shield Array. And I usually go with the Iconian Resistance Warp Core. This time I just said I'd change it around and just go with something different and this is what I went with. Uh, I went with the Bejor Defense uh, Hyper Injection Warp Core. Um, but yes, normally I would go uh, Iconian uh, deflector and Iconium Warp Core and Bejor Impulse Engines and Bejor Shields uh, but you can go with whatever you want. Um, we're using the two-piece set bonus of the Iconian stuff for uh, the uh, free shield heal and uh, plus they're, they're, they're good stats. Uh, I really like uh, resilient shield arrays as well. If you look at this one you can see here we have 7,824.7 maximum shield capacity and then below that it says 5% uh, absorption, 5% bleed through. So 5% of the damage that it takes is absorbed into the shield and 5% of it bleeds through directly onto the hull. Now all other shields she, uh, yeah, all other shields, covariant, um, uh, covariant, uh, regenerative, and whatever other ones, uh, what was it, covariant, regenerative, uh, resilient, and uh, there's, there's another one I'm forgetting, but anyway, covariant uh, and uh, regenerative, um, uh, every other shield that there is has a 10% bleed through, but the resilient has a 5-5. Five, 5 five absorption, 5 bleed through. Every other shield, it's 10 bleed through, no absorption. Uh, and that's why I really like um, uh, resilient shield arrays. Uh, the resilient, the Iconian shield uh, comes from tier 5 Iconian rep. And like I said, the Bajor stuff comes from Scylla and Charybdis. And the Warp Core, uh, I think it's a very rare Phoenix token. And the uh, Deflector Array is um, tier 2 Iconian rep. Uh, in the aft weapon slot, uh, we actually only have one aft weapon slot uh, on this ship. And we are using one of our favorites, the uh, Kinetic Cutting Beam, uh, which comes from uh, tier 2 uh, Task Force Omega reputation. We're using this in conjunction with the Assimilated module. We'll get to that in just a minute. And uh, uh, this is one of my favorites and always a good addition to any build, uh, pretty much. Uh, uh, I like it because um, I like uh, the two-piece set bonus. And then whenever uh, I get the um, endeavor to deal kinetic damage, uh, I can usually uh, achieve that endeavor uh, through normal gameplay without actually trying to uh, finish the endeavor just through normal gameplay I can usually complete the endeavor uh, because most of my builds have a kinetic cutting beam and uh, believe me this bad boy doesn't belong racking up the damage so yeah um, a good addition to any build we'll talk about the two-piece set bonus in uh, just a minute or two now in our experimental weapon slot we have the experimental flak shot artillery 
Uh, this comes from uh, com the competitive reputation, tier 3. Um, uh, it's, it's a pretty good uh, experimental weapon. Um, I just, this build I said I'd go for something different rather than the normal bog standard one um, that uh, is used on most ships. Uh, but yeah, went with the experimental flag shot artillery. Uh, so that's weapons and gear. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about devices very quickly. Uh, we have two device slots on this build. Uh, the first slot, we are using the subspace field modulator, which you get from the uh, mis the uh, mission skirmishes. If we look here, uh, da -da 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 -da, where are you? Skirmish. Skirmish. Uh, do I not? Oh, no, it's uh, available. Uh, here we are. Skirmish. We have reports of a true wave See, elite there it is there. entering Some the neutral field. zone. And, and there's the shields. Covariant, as well as Covariant regenerative. Uh, we need you to intercept the true wave I know and learn I, why they are I so thought that was going to list all, all the shields. Sorry, so Covariant, regenerative, resilient. And I know there's another one as well. Uh, but it's uh, escaping me at the moment. Anyway, uh, you get the subspace field modulator from this, uh, the mission skirmish. Uh, then we have a red matter capacitor, which you get from a Phoenix very rare price token. Um, good addition to any build as well. Uh, plus 25 all power levels for 30 seconds. Really, really good buff there. Buff there. Uh, okay, let's move on to uh, consoles. Uh, first up, we are using the Zero Point Energy Conduit, which comes from uh, the Romulan Reputation Tier 1. Uh, gives plus 2.3 power levels to all subsystems um, and uh, improves starship drain expertise and 2.3% critical chance. Really, really good console there. That's a great one. Uh, next up, we have the assimilated module. Uh, we are using this in conjunction with the kinetic cutting beam and uh, uh, this gives plus 1.5 critical chance, plus 11.5 uh, percent crit severity, plus 5 weapon power, plus 6.3 starship damage control, plus 28.6 starship control expertise, and the two-piece set bonus is Omega Weapon Amplifier, and uh, that is 2.5% chance when firing energy weapons to gain wep Omega Weapon Amplifier for 5 seconds. Omega Weapon Amplifier is plus 10 we weapon power, plus 500 weapon power drain resistance, and minus 500% weapon power cost. So basically what that means is, um, when you fire your weapons, okay, your weapons power drains because it's used power to fire the weapons. So for one firing, I won't say cycle, one volley, um, you can fire all of your weapons at maximum potential, uh, dealing heavy damage, and that's basically uh, what Omega Weapon Amplifier does. And uh, yeah, I really like it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I actually forgot to mention one thing. Uh, the uh, Warp Core, uh, just very quickly go back to this. Uh, because it's a, a beyond ultra rare quality, it has the Amp modifier. Uh, so you gain the Amp modifier on all Warp Cores, or nearly all Warp Cores, when they reach ultra rare quality. And the amp modifier, if you look, uh, where is this? Do, 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 do. No, that wasn't it. Hang on a second here. I have to find it in the description. Uh, siphoning fields. Oh, right. Oh, so down around here, okay. Uh, it says plus 3.3% all damage per subsystem with 75 or more power. Uh, yeah, so what that means is for each one of these subsystems, weapons, shields, engines, and auxiliary, if any of them reach 75 or more power, all right, for each one that you get to or above that level, you gain 3.3% uh, bonus additional damage. So if you have all four subsystems at or above 75 in combat, uh, that's 13.2% uh, bonus damage that you're doing just for having your power levels right. So, a nice little buff there. And, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that when we were talking about it originally. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's the assimilator module. Uh, next up, we have the ferrofluid hydro hydraulic assembly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, 
this comes from Terran Task Force Reputation. Uh, it's a tier 1 unlock. It gives plus 12.4 maximum hull hit points, plus 3.8 weapon power settings, and plus 3.8 auxiliary power settings, and minus 0.5 second recharge turbo torpedo uh, recharge time. Uh, we are using this in conjunction with the Terran Task Force Disruptor Dual Heavy Cannons. And the two-piece set bonus for this is plus 13.3% projectile weapon damage. Now, we're going to go back to this torpedo that we talked about a few minutes ago. The Nausicaan Energy Torpedo. This is an energy torpedo, meaning that it doesn't deal kinetic damage or anything like that. Uh, it deals disruptor damage. It's a dis disruptor torpedo. So it benefits from our tactical consoles, okay? However, because this two-piece set bonus gives plus 13.3% projectile weapon damage, this is still a projectile. So it is benefiting from that 13.3% bonus damage. If that two-piece was plus 13.3% photon damage or quantum damage or transphasic damage or tricobalt tri damage or whatever uh, it would be completely useless uh, and wouldn't be usable for this uh, torpedo at all but because it's projectile uh, it does fall under this category uh, at least to the best of my knowledge uh, uh, it does anyway uh, but yeah I'm pretty certain about that uh, next up, uh, another really good console. Um, uh, this is the Temporal Disentanglement Suite. Uh, this comes from the story mission Butterfly. It gives plus 5 auxiliary power settings, plus 25% maximum shield capacity, <clears throat> and plus uh, 0 to 2.5% critical chance based on auxiliary power level, and plus 0 to 10% crit critical severity based on auxiliary power level and 3% uh, shield resistance. So, the more power you have in auxiliary, the more crit chance and crit severity you get. Uh, so a really good console, yeah. And um, you can pick it up from the Story Mission Butterfly. Uh, next up, another science console. Uh, the Nausicaan Siphon Capacitor. Uh, this gives plus 37.4 Starship Drain expertise. Plus 31.7% power transfer rate, and plus 23.8 disruptor damage. Okay, so that science console is buffing our uh, weapons up there as well. Now, the two piece set bonus is uh, Nausicaan weaponry augmentation. Disruptor net gains. 917.3 disruptor damage every one second for five seconds in addition to its normal effect uh this uh right where 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 here we are uh where does it say disruptor net on hold uh 1016 disruptor damage per second for every five seconds with Nausicaan weaponry augmentation set while under the effects of attack pattern beta each weapon fired oh wait that's something different uh, 20 recharge, uh, d -d 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 what am I looking for here? Uh, disruptor damage. Oh, I think that's it. Plus 20% chance, hold for 5 seconds. So that's the disruptor net. Um, this, I mean, you know, it's, it's a science console that gives dis b boosts disruptor weapons. And um, this is a torpedo that deals disruptor damage, so it just, it you know, the build kind of begs for that two-piece set bonus, you know. Um, and uh, you can pick this up from the story mission Echoes of Light, same as the torpedo, alright, you pick up both items in the story mission Echoes of Light. Um, right, next up, another favourite of mine, the uh, Universal Console Plasmonic Leech. Uh, Basically, it steals uh, target power and gives it to you as bonus power. Uh, it gives plus 0 0.75 all power levels to self per stack for 15 seconds. Stacks up to 10 times. And uh, to target, 
uh, minus 1.4 all power levels to target per stack for 15 seconds stacks up to 10 times. Uh, a really good console, a favorite of mine, uh, almost a must have for every build. Uh, not always, but for a lot of them. Um, still a really good console. Next up, uh, we have the Herm oh, uh, the uh, sorry, the uh, Plasmonic Leech. You can get that from the ship vendor uh, it, when you pick up the Vandal Destroyer. All right, on the KDF side, uh, pick up the Vandal Destroyer, and uh, you get the Plasmonic Leech console. Um, yeah, uh, KDFs do not purchase. Uh, off the exchange, uh, you get them from the Vandal Destroyer. It's the only way you can get a Plasmonic Leech is from the Vandal Destroyer on the KDF side. So, yep, there you go. I nearly forgot about that. <clears throat> um, right, next up we have the Harmonic Resonance Relay. Uh, this gives plus 23.8% disruptive damage, plus 23.8% transphasic projectile. So we're, we're benefiting from the disruptor damage. And then we're also getting plus 4.8 armor penetration for weapons. Alright, so that's for all the weapons. Um, the two-piece set bonus uh, for this, because we're using it in conjunction with the uh, uh, dual heavy cannon, is uh, plus 3.8 weapon power settings. Uh, resonance disruptor wave increases uh, every energy damage dealt to shields by 15%. Uh, so... Right. This gives 23.8 disruptor damage. A tactical console gives 37.5. Uh, this is a tactical console, so it had to go into one of these slots. And sure, the disruptor damage isn't as high as a fleet tactical console, uh, but it does have that armor penetration, and you are getting that two-piece set bonus. Um, so... Uh, that's why we're using it in conjunction with this um, dual heavy cannon. And just like the dual heavy cannon, uh, you can pick this console up from the same story mission, Blood of the Ancients. Uh, finally, in terms of gear and equipment and consoles, we have the uh, uh, tactical uh, vulnerability locators uh, disruptor variant, which comes from a tier 3 spire and gives plus 37.5 disruptive damage and plus 1.9% critical chance. And uh, we have four of those bad boys on here. Now, uh, for those of you who uh, don't know, uh, the reason why you would go for the critical chance consoles over the critical severity consoles is a crit severity console fully uh, leveled up, and uh, which would be Mark 15 Epic. Each one gives something like um, 9.2, 9.8 uh, crit severity. All right, fully leveled up. That's what it gives. Now, if you look at, uh, let's see, where is it on here? Uh, do, 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 do. Right, it's down around here, okay? This Terran Task Force weapon has two crit D modifiers. And if you look down there, you'll see we have a plus 40% critical severity. And basically, uh, you get more bang for your buck going for crit severity or crit D modifiers on your weapons as opposed to going for crit severity on your tactical consoles. So mod your weapons to get as many crit D modifiers as you can, crit, crit severity or crit damage, and try and jack up your critical chance as much as you possibly can on your tactical consoles, okay? So that's that explained. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Next, we're going to talk about skills. Uh, we're going to just glide over this pretty quickly. Uh, this is uh, very standard, especially for me, uh, a very similar skill tree that you've seen me use on many, many other ships. Um, energy weapons training, three points. Shield capacity, two points. Hull capacity, two points. Electroplasma systems, two points. Uh, drain expertise, two points. Targeting expertise, three points. Defensive maneuvering, three points. Uh, weapon specialization, three points. Weapon amplification, three points. Shield hardness, three points. Damage control, one point. Hull plating, two points. Uh, defensive subsystem tuning, three points. 
Offensive subsystem tuning, 3 points. Long range targeting sensors, 3 points. Hull penetration, 3 points. Shield penetration, 3 points. And warp core potential, 2 points. Uh, as you can see, very standard, very similar to a lot of other skill trees that I've done. Um, you want to spec into tactical uh, pretty heavy and you want to get as much power out of your engineering. You want to uh, offset any of your debuffs or anything with your science stuff and your survivability. So yeah, pretty standard there. Uh, in terms of specializations, we are using pilot because this is a pilot ship uh, for our primary and we are using strategist uh, for our secondary. Strategist is a really good specialization um, and uh, a, a good solid choice for uh, your secondary. So that's what we're using there. Next up, we're going to talk about traits. So personal space traits. First up, we have advanced rapid support. Then we have bulkhead technician. Then we have innocuous. Then we have last ditched effort. Then we have operative. Then we have Superior Accurate, upgraded at the Fleet K-13 Fleet Holding <clears throat> for 100,000 in uh, Fleet Credits. Then we have Superior Cannon Training, again upgraded at the Fleet K-13 Fleet Holding for 100,000 Fleet Credits. Then we have Superior Elusive, same deal again, K-13. And then we have Superior Techie, same job again, K-13. And finally, Warp Theorist. Moving on to Starship Traits, uh, first up we have Desperate Repairs. Uh, this is a free unlock uh, on the KDF side if you have unlocked this trait on the Federation side with the Guardian Cruiser. Um, so because I have the Guardian Cruiser, this was a free unlock through the Dilithium store and uh, it's, it's, it's a good trait, it's a good trait, so I used it. Uh, next up we have Improved Temporal Insight. Uh, this was got through the Delta Recruit event. Um, if you have a Delta Recruit, you can unlock this trait uh, for your character, uh, all your characters as well. Then we have Retaliation. Retaliation comes from the Paladin Temporal Battle Cruiser. Same deal as the Des uh, Desperate Repairs trait. If you unlock the trait on the Paladin Temporal Battle Cruiser, it's a free unlock on the KDF side through the Dilithium store. Uh, next up, uh, we have Standoff, which is the trait uh, that actually came with the D4X Pilot Bird of Prey. Um, and pretty good uh, uh, trait. Actually, to be honest, it's a very solid trait, actually. Uh, yeah, really, really good. So that's where that came from. Uh, and finally, in terms of space traits, we have uh, Withering Barrage. Uh, which increases the duration of cannon scatter volley. And this comes from the core um, ship in the Z store. Uh, really, really good trade. Very, very solid trade. And uh, uh, if you're using cannons, uh, just so good. So, normally with cannon scatter volley, you get two. Uh, you get two volleys off in the 10 seconds that it's active. But with Withering Barrage, you can get three volleys off uh, within uh, uh, the 14 seconds that it's active. So, yeah, uh, a really good trait there. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus, I need a drink. Ah, much better. Okay, Space Reputation Traits. First up, we have Advanced Targeting Systems, Rank 2, uh, which comes from... Uh, that comes from... Di yeah, Dyson. Dyson Reputation. Then we have Destabilizing Phase Array, Rank 2, which comes from Myconium Reputation. Then we have Enhanced Armor Penetration, Rank 2, which comes from Delta Reputation. Uh, next up, we have Enhanced Shield Penetration Rank 2, which comes from Nakara Reputation. And uh, finally, then we have Magnified Firepower which uh, Rank 2, which comes from Gamma Reputation. Uh, because these are all Rank 2 traits, you have to have each one of those... Oh, excuse me. You have to have each one of those reputations up to Tier 6. 
In active reputation, we are using uh, Biomolecular Shield Generator Rank 2. Uh, we are also using Deploy Sensor Interference Platform Rank 2. We're using Quantum Singularity Manipulation Rank 2 and uh, Refracting Tetrion Cascade Rank 2. Uh, basically, I just went with the first four um, space uh, traits. Um, right, okay, that's traits. Uh, next up, Bridge Officer Abilities, or Bridge Officers. Bridge Officer Abilities, we'll go with. Uh, so this ship has uh, great versatility in it, in that there is uh, every single one of the seats is a universal seat. So you can, you can make this ship to be whatever you want, really, um, within reason. As you can see here, I've got two tactical, I've got two engineering and one science. So, uh, in our uh, commander tactical and lieutenant commander tactical, we have uh, two copies of attack team one. We have two copies of attack pattern beta one. We have a torpedo high yield three. We have a cannon scatter volley two. And over here we have a cannon scatter volley three. There are tactical abilities. In uh, our first engineer lieutenant seat, we have engineering team one, then emergency power to weapons one, uh, two. Sorry. In our other lieutenant engineering seat, we have emergency power to shields one, and we have directed energy modulation one. And finally, in our science, we have transfer shield strength one, which is a shield heal. So we have two shield heals and one hull heal on this build. So, uh, bridge officers. Uh, first up, we have um, this dude. He is a uh, Jim Adair, as you can see. Uh, we are using him because he comes with the space trait marked here. Uh, engineered soldier. Plus 5% all weapon damage, plus 1% crit chance, plus 2.5% crit severity. Uh, then we have uh, a Romulan, uh, which you can get from your fleet embassy. And uh, we use him because he comes with the uh, space trait Superior Romulan Operative. Uh, plus 2% crit chance, plus 5% crit severity, and plus 15% power recharge speed for cloaking. Uh, you can have a max of three of these guys on your build. Three Romulans with Superior Romulan Operative. Uh, of course, if you are a Romulan, you don't have to pick them up from the embassy at all. You can just recruit them from the Romulus command. Um, is this him? Yeah. Okay, this uh, engineer guy is a Nausicaan, and we're using him because he has... All Nausicaans have the pirate trait, which is plus 1.5% bonus all damage, and plus 150 starship stealth. Uh, so that's why we're using him. Uh, then we have this engineer here, another Jemadar. He has the same engineered soldier trait. And finally, uh, we have Mr. Potato Head, which you get from the story mission Alliances. And this guy actually has two space traits. Uh, one being efficient, which is plus 7.5 starship warp core efficiency. And pirate, plus 1.5% bonus all damage, plus 150 starship stealth. Um, so they're the bridge officers that we are using. Uh, let's move on to uh, duty officers. Okay, so duty officers. In our active space, first up, we have a shield distribution officer, which gives attack pattern beta restores hull when firing. You can pick this guy up in the Delta Quadrant uh, duty officer pack. That's where he comes from. Uh, of course, it is not a guarantee that you will get him, but that's where he comes from. Uh, next up, we have Warfare Master. Uh, increased damage versus all. He is a reward for the Gamma Recruit. Uh, if you have a Gamma Recruit character, you can unlock this guy on all of your tunes, and he is absolutely amazing. Uh, next up, we have a Projectile Weapons Officer. Chance to reduce the time to recharge torpedoes. Uh, we are using Law for this uh, build. 
and Law is a free duty officer that you can get from these uh, mission Fist Full of Gorn. Uh, so if we open up our journal again and we go to Wastelands, here we are, Fistful of Gorn. First playthrough of that mission will unlock this duty officer. Um, next up we have a Warp Core Engineer. Uh, chance to temporarily improve your ship's power levels on use of any emergency power ability. Uh, they are currently going for about 500k on the exchange at the moment, so not very expensive. Uh, next up we have a damage control engineer. Uh, chance to reduce the recharge time for emergency power to subsystem abilities. Uh, they are currently going for approximately uh, 800k on the exchange at the moment. Again, not very pricey, you know, pretty cheap. And finally, we have an astrometric scientist. Uh, recharge time reduced on all transwarp abilities, and they are going for approximately 400k at the moment. Uh, so yeah, not very expensive there in terms of uh, duty officers. Um, right. So now we are going to jump into a patrol, and uh, you guys uh, will be able to see what this bad boy is like uh, in combat. Now, <clears throat> first thing I want to know, because this is the first time I've done it, I'm actually going to uh, do all future um, demonstrations of builds on the advanced difficulty. Um, it was something I never thought about when I started this series, uh, but a few people have brought it up, and uh, I was even thinking about it myself, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do them all on advanced difficulty from here on out. Uh, so we're going to launch our favorite, Sentinels, and uh, we will see this bad boy in action. Have a little bit of a slow load here, it seems. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, here we are. We're in luck. We may now. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cloak up, and we're going to move forward here. Now, here's what Electric I like doing. Out of war. They're arming All weapons. Right, so we'll All right, now we use our plant maneuvers. We're back and we get a second volley in. On the targets. Off now, move on to the next area. Look at those pilot maneuvers. I actually didn't mean to do that, but it's just like so much fun. All right. Deploy satellites. Okay, let's have a look. Let's move our shields, and we will. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just cloak up. Uh, so a fun fact rating. Uh, I would give this ship a ten out of ten. Uh, fun factor rating. It is just so much fun to fly. The pilot maneuvers are absolutely fantastic. I love them. Uh, I, I just always have so much fun uh, in pilot ships. Like what I just done there, uh, I got so close, I used the pilot maneuvers and I uh, stepped back away from my target and uh, was able to get another volley off uh, on target. And it was just, yeah, brilliant. Um, <clears throat> actually, do you know what I just realized? I should be. Hitting all these guys uh, head on without the standoff trace. Um, yeah, we'll try and do that. See what I mean? Just pipe moves are so much fun. The funny thing is with this, uh, I've got such a mix of uh, disruptor dual heavy cannons. This build looks like a rainbow build, even though it's not. And it's anything but a rainbow build. 
Uh, but it looks it. It really does look it. Let's get satellite gamma online um, while we can. So yeah, a 10 out of 10 fun factor rating. Uh, I mean, look at that. Who wouldn't love flying a ship doing that sort of stuff? It's just so much fun. Um, yeah, so this is one of them that I given max rating. I, It's got the survivability. It's got the power... Uh, uh, you know, Jeremy Clarkson power um, this. More and uh, it's most certainly got the maneuverability to go along with it as well and um, yeah, one of my favourites, I always love playing this character and jumping on the ship whenever I can uh, so if you've been thinking about picking up the D4X, uh, I can strongly recommend it, it's a very very good ship um, like you can right, see here, look, we're dispatching deploy, all of these groups relatively quickly. Alright, let's kick into Funnel Impulse. They're hitting Satellite Alpha again. Oop. A little bit of lag there. I'm actually traveling faster than my torpedo. It's awesome. See those big yellow numbers popping up. Where'd he go? He gone? No, nope, there he is. Another Alachi fleet. They're going after All satellite right. Delta. From satellite gamma. Looks like an Alachi flagship. Alright, uh, we were pretty close. Alright, so here we are now. Let's go for everything. Oops. Look, I'm actually traveling with my torpedo. See what max will I go for? What am I low on? Uh, Delta. Where are Getting you? lots Delta. of good data coming in from the satellites. There we go. Looks like they're green across the board. Uh, so yeah, there. That's the build. Uh, that was on an advanced difficulty. As you can see, there was no trouble dispatching any of the ships there. Um, cut through them really, really easily. Um, a lot of fun flying this build. The pilot maneuvers are just fantastic. The visuals of it uh, are amazing. Um, so, uh, yeah, a 10 out of 10 fun factor rating for the uh, Kelvin Timeline uh, D4X Pilot Bird of Prey. Uh, so, yeah, I guess that wraps up uh, this episode. Thanks a million for watching, folks. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please leave a like. That would help me out so much. You have no idea. Uh, the more interactions I can get you guys to do uh, on my channel, and on each of the videos helps me out so much because you know YouTube picks it up and it gets logged by the YouTube algorithms and whatnot. And uh, 
uh, it helps the channel and videos get populated in other people's, you know, players' searches and stuff. And uh, it really does help me out so much. Excuse me. So, uh, yeah, I really do appreciate all of your support. It's been absolutely fantastic. And thank you so much. Uh, it means so much. And um, if you have uh, any requests for builds that you would like to see, leave a comment down below. And if I have the ship, I will endeavor to get a build done on that ship for you as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below as well. Uh, again, getting you guys to uh, leave likes and comments on videos makes a huge difference. And um, I do my very best to reply to everybody. And uh, uh, like I said, it makes a, a huge difference and really, really does help me out. So thank you everyone who has been doing that. Uh, finally, there is a link for this build uh, below in the description uh, that will lead you to STO Academy uh, in case you were going to replicate the build and you want to uh, have like a, you know, a, a checklist or a to-do list, uh, you can bookmark that link and uh, you can go back to it and uh, review, you know, like what you have done, what you haven't done, and you can figure out what you have to do next and what, you know, what have you. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, all done up there and ready for you guys. My name is Winters and I'll catch you next time. So take care.